You're alive. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hope you're all well. I have my assistant here with me today. My daughter, Molly, is going to be holding the camera for me while I do the talky bit because um, doing it on a tripod is always challenging. So we're just gonna flip the camera around and now I'm gonna hand over to Molly. He's going to do the camera bit. So uh, today I'm gonna be taking my started cells from my starter and putting them in my finishes. So I've got three finishes here for the moment because it's the start of the season. I've got other finishes that I'm gonna be bringing into play as and when they're ready, but I don't need them till the day after tomorrow because there'll be enough here with a couple more I've got there ready set up to actually use for now. So what I've done yesterday is I got my cell builder ready. I went live yesterday and showed you the configuration of the setup I had. And uh, I then put the graft in last night. Now I was umming and arming about how I'm gonna manage the um, the problem with nectar because yesterday was probably our heaviest flow just to say today that we've got a really windy day and if you look at the top of those trees you can see the wind is coming from the east the anti-cyclone we've got that's been anchored over the UK has now come back around and we're getting more of a northerly feed so we've lost our southerly flow and the temperatures dropped by four degrees already today so it's probably going to have an impact on our nectar flow which is probably not going to really affect us for the cell building but it means that everything else will have to have the feeders on just in case they need extra feed. So, um, assuming we've got cells in the starter, we're going to need to put them into a finisher. Now, what is a finisher and why do I use them? I get asked this question quite a lot. And the reason why I use finishers is you could very easily make a starter, a hopelessly queenless setup. You put your, la your gra grafted larvae in, whether it's from a Nico kit cup or um, the Genta system or whether you graft yourself, that's entirely your choice and your preference. I always say grafting is better once you learn the skill. So you could put those grafted larvae into your setup and leave them and they will become queens uh, in uh, 10, 10, 11 days before they start to hatch. Because obviously it's 16 days from the egg being laid to the queen emerging if you, if you follow the queen cell route. But the reason why I move them from the starter to a finisher is because my starter is so super strong, I can draw up lots of cells quickly. I could do one set of graphs and I could leave them in that starter and they would probably all be finished. And if you go online and look at Instagram or YouTube, you'll find people who just do one setup and they end up with about 30 to 40 cells and the cells are pretty good. But there is always this slight dilemma or slight debate as to would your cells be better if they'd have been in a finisher and less of them? Because if you imagine you've got a colony that's full of nurse bees, it might draw up all your cells and get them started. But as time progresses, if you put 50 cells in, you may end up with about 30 to 40 cells at the end. And you may end up with those cells not being quite well as fed as they could have been if they were a lot less of them. So I always like to say that if you have finishers, it's better for a couple of reasons. One, because you spread your risks. A starter with all the cells in it from the day one you graft and you leave the cells in is a running risk. And if you're making bees at a time of year when you've only got a short period, you can't afford to lose those cells. And if a stray virgin gets in or the queen somehow makes her way back to the starter box, she will tear down all those cells and you've lost them. And you don't know really till a few days later or probably till the end of the process. Whereas if you move individual cells, in other words, a, a cell bar to a finisher like this, you finish them above a queen excluder. So the queen that's in here, this is a, a queen right finisher. The queen that is in here cannot access these cells to tear them down. She won't tear them down and nor can any other queen and you get the benefits of having only a few cells being finished by an already strong colony. So to me, it's a no-brainer. It's a lot more work, but you look at the quality of cells, and if you look carefully at people's pictures where they just fit all their cells in a cell builder, unless it's a monstrous cell builder and they really know what they're doing and they're using it for honey, there's this kind of, are there, is there really enough raw jelly in those cells that you could have had more? 
and that's the dilemma. You always want to make sure that you give your bees the maximum. So I've made up these two already. I'm going to quickly make this one uh, a hopelessly queen, um, sorry, a queen right finisher. I've also got pollen sub here that we're going to put on after that I got from the workshop this morning and I've got a feeder because even though it's the summer and there's a flow on, you still want to put a feeder on and you still want to put pollen sub on if you can. I'm not saying it won't, it, it'll be necessary, but what you really need to do is cover yourself and give the bees everything you possibly can because time is short and every queen you get mated is really, really important, but it's mated the best you can because in three months time, we'll be virtually finished and that is it for the year then we start talking about what we're going to do for next year but you've got to get it right now mm. so we still have smoke i'm going to stand here molly's probably going to come a bit closer yeah. these are all nice genetic bees so they're not going to be running around i'm just going to show you how i'm going to set this configuration up at the moment it's a five over five in other words a 10 frame colony with and i and it was recently built because I bought these bees back from my overwintering newt yard where these, these were finishers last year as well. So these were in their second year now. These are blue dot queens. So we'll see what they're like. But I know this one's good. And we're gonna just rearrange the configuration so that the queen goes underneath, beneath the queen excluder. So we'll have to find her. Can I just see if I had quite a few messages in the uh, okay, live well, box? I, I won't be able to read the messages. Yeah. One thing, we can't really see the screen that well. I tried yeah, to see well, the Well, I can read some of them you out. You can read some of them out if you want. There's if... some people who have been are really pleased to see you in the apiary right now. Right. And a lot of people are commenting about how um, the weather has been poor in their areas. So yeah. are people in Sweden, people in America... I think I saw North Carolina, Toronto, if I'm right. A lot of people are pleased to see you in Napier. And someone also said, do you sell queens? Okay, well, I, I don't really sell queens because I'm always building my own stock. Um, I, I don't have a, a really a license to explore and I need a certificate from my local veterinary group to do that. So I know it's something I've got to organize. And long term, maybe I will, but I don't do that at the moment because it's just another thing. I always sell every single queen I have that goes in a nook. And if I don't sell them, I use them with a, um, you know, for, the, for making gains in the spring because I have had winter losses the last couple of years. Not much this last winter. So this is a nice strong colony. I'm just going to look at the top and assess it first and I'm going to take the top box off in a minute. So I want to see if the queen's up here. We've just had a massive flow, which is still on. You can see that top frame, which is what I'd expect. This was brood when I put it in. It's hatching out. They're, they're back filling it with nectar, okay? So there's no... Um, there's plenty of pollen in that frame. So if I was to keep this one up in the top, I'd want to keep it near to where my larvae is going to go. Or where my started cells are going to go, I should say. Let's have a look at the next frame. This is full of larvae. They're absolutely tiny. They just hatched, but this is exactly what I want in the top of my finisher because there'll be nurse bees drawn to this to feed those larvae. And if there wasn't nurse bees in this, I'd have brought them up from the bottom and put them, put this frame in the top next to where my cells are going to go. Okay, so this one can definitely stay here. I'm just going to make sure I've got the trouble is because this flow is so strong, I want to also add a frame of foundation to the top here so the bees can build if they need to because we don't have a super on these you see so this is that same frame there's the honey there's the pollen there's pollen on this side too so this one's going to stay at the top so technically that's all i need these two frames apart is where my larvae will go but i've just got to make sure the queen now is underneath there's people are saying how beautiful your frames look well we do thank you we do change our frames a lot because we, we believe in a lot of hygiene regimes. We have, have had a lot of winter losses, so a lot of the frames are new. Yeah, someone just said that it's a shame that you don't sell your queens because they think that your genetics are nice and calm. <laughs> well, long term, I probably will do, but I can be absolutely honest with you. I've got a cranky apiary where I can go and the bees are pretty atrocious and they're mm. not, really like, not like this. So that's fine. I haven't seen the queen. It says she's on this frame. So there's a space in here for her to lay, but she's not on this frame and she hasn't laid in here yet. So I'm probably going to take this frame out for the minute and change it for a frame for them to draw because it's a honey frame. 
They've left a little space, as I said, because she laid in there. There's someone there who says, would you opt to leave the cells in the startle with a queen, a queen excluder instead of... I didn't get to read the end of the question. Yeah, well, what, what they probably asked me was... Um, instead of leaving them in the finish... Yeah, instead of... Instead of moving to the finish, you can yeah. do, and that's absolutely fine. You can, you can reinvert your finisher if you go to um, my YouTube channel and look up uh, the Cell Builder Explained questions and answers, I talk about that and it's exactly what you can do. Okay, it's one of the options you can do. So, I'm just going to shake this frame off, get the most of the bees off for now. I'm going to put this one here. I like to keep most of my frames off the floor whenever possible because it really keeps um, everything tidy. So I'll put it in front of that one, let's put it to the side. Out. The bees can crawl off up there. Well, I'm going to replace it for a, but I'm also going to take this top box off, use this lid, and we're going to check we can find the queen because I want to know where she is. If I can't find her, what I do is I shake everything through from these frames and then the bees come back after through the excluder. But I'm pretty sure the queen is going to be down here. So this looks like a frame they're building. Yeah, they're building that out nice. You can see how strong the flow is. It's full of nectar. She's not laid into that. So I'll leave that one in the bottom. The queen will have room to lay in that. You just have to keep giving room at the moment. While your flow is so strong, which we've got. See the light there. That is a mixture of honey and pollen. Mm -hmm. A lot of pollen. A we lot haven't of seen her yet. There is cells. There is uh, eggs in this corner. The whole idea of a finisher and how you set it up is you bring up brood from the bottom if necessary that's open and then it attracts your nurse bees. So I've got a frame of drone comb here and there's too much in there. You can say she's laid up well there. But it's too much of a resource on this colony, so I'll be removing this and taking it to another colony because I don't like this amount of brood. I don't know why I've got this in here, but I'll take this out very soon. But she has laid into it well, so that's good. And looks like quite new eggs, so she might be on the next frame. I just want to find her because I want to know where she is, <laughs> which is always the issue. Have I chased her through the box? Or have I missed her? You probably have. It's not there. Let's just check this again. That's all laid up anyway, that's good. These are smaller finishes than I would usually have because it's the start of the season. And these were colonies that I brought back, to say from their overwintering place, but I didn't have room here. So, um, they're not massive, but they're certainly big enough to finish 14 cells. And I'll finish them pretty admirably, I'm sure. I'm standing right in front of this colony, so they're not exactly happy about it, but... No, they're not happy about them. me either. Where is this queen? Okay. So she's not on there either. this one once more she might be still in the top box but notice so I put the top box on a piece of wood or something so that the, the bees can move freely underneath if they won't get squashed if they're on a piece of grass or something you know you've got to be so careful that's how you can lose a queen so easily she should be a blue dot queen uh, sorry a, a green dot queen this queen so um, I transferred in a hurry the other week and didn't mark the box. You said blue dot. Yeah, that's nice brood, good frame. Someone says, uh, check the frame on the right side of the top box. I don't think you pulled it out the first time. Okay, thanks. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go. There we go. Look, there's my blue dot queen. She's a blue dot. So we're going to grab her now. And we're going to put her straight into the bottom. So I know that the queen is in there. There she goes. So she now has room to lay in the bottom because there's foundation they're building and there is open brew there as well. The top box is perfect for what I need. So, just shows you, easy to miss. And in this top box, I'm going to put a frame of foundation. So on goes the excluder. Mm. There's someone who asked, when was your first graft last year? Before or after the 25th of April? To be honest, I think it was actually in May. Yeah. I started really late last yeah, year. Yeah, I think um, it was. I, I can't. Rightly, I started a week later than I am now. Um, but I usually start mid-April if everything's good. But this year we've had a lot of cold. So. Um, As we were saying in the comments section. <laughs> right. There we go. On goes the excluder. So those bees will sort themselves out. They'll crawl around to the front. It's so warm anyway. This goes on the top. That is now set up as a queen right finisher. And on this one, these are homemade boxes. This one you can see the frames are a little bit high because I didn't make it correctly to my measurement. So what I do is I've got an eek, just a polystyrene eek I use. That goes on like that and I put my pollen sub in there. So you just have to be a bit adaptable. You make use of what you got, you use what you have. I put a frame of foundation in there. I'm using a lot of these. So the bees also have plenty of room to build. They will probably not build on the, uh, the frames I put in, on the, on the, on the, um, on, on the coat. They will not, not build on the star bar that I put in. But I know that's where my, my frame will go, straight between the two, and then I'll put the, the feeder back on top and everything will be good. Mm. I'll have plenty of resources to finish those cells. And that's all we need to do. That is now ready to take the started cells. So we'll leave that like that. This is what I tend to do, but I'm going to bring a, a roof with me because it's cold today. Because you've got to remember that you really don't want to have any issues with moving cells. So if you do make a start from the cell builder and, and a finisher for, for the afterwards, and even to the incubator stage, make sure you've got all your things close to hand so you can easily transfer them around. There's people who are saying that your finisher is fantastic. And uh, also there's someone who said um, you're not feeding them except the pollen patties or the, the pollen sub. I am feeding the pollen sub but only when the, they're being finished, okay? And it, they may not need it. They, they may be plenty of pollen, but the whole, my whole idea is that if you want to make the best cells you can, you give them everything you can. And if they need extra, they've got it. Okay. Yeah. I, I wouldn't normally do it and I've got natural pollen that I could rub into a frame, but to be honest, I've run out of frames to rub because I've used every frame I have apart from the foundation. Because I'm desperately trying to give room to other colonies this time of year. So let's go and harvest some cells from the starter. The finishes are now ready. I know I'm probably going to have most of the time on the first graft and I will probably have a better success for it on the second graft, but most of the time I will probably have about, I've got three bars of 14. And I might have two to three bars to go into the to the finisher. Maybe more, we'll see. But it, the weather's gone off a bit, it's a bit cooler. We'll see what we've got. This is what you want. This, is, this hasn't been touched since yesterday. You can see the bees are still hanging out the front. They've got, they've got hardly any room in that box. And that's what you want, a completely full box, full of nurse bees. So on the top I've got a feeder and I've got a super, I'm using it as a feeder shell, which is straightforward, standard. Okay. Now I didn't really have this configured how I really wanted it last night because I was doing so much just that I kind of ran out of time. But it, I still did get a frame of foundation in and I didn't put a, a, a super on in the end because I just felt that I knew it was going to get a bit cooler last night and I thought, well, there's going to be less nectar coming in tomorrow. However, I know I've got the speeder on, they're not taking much, but it's on if they need it. It gives them that feeling there's a, there's a flow still running. And 
we'll have a look and see if they've drawn out that first frame that I put in. And also incidentally, when you do put your feeder down, always put it down so that you've got a gap underneath the bottom because often you'll crush about a thousand bees. So put it down somewhere you know they can be out the way. So these are pollen frames I've got spare, but I've left them here because they're full of bees and I'm kind of just like just juggling them around for the moment. So let's take this off. Is this a breeder or not? Yeah, this, this is a breeder queen. Uh, sorry, no, this isn't a breeder queen. What the is breeder it? queen will be in my, my specialist yeah. colonies. This is just a, a nice cell builder that's prolific. Okay, so I added 10 frames of brood to this the other week, uh, 10 days ago, and that, then I, uh, I added, the queen was, uh, that box there was underneath this one. And yesterday I removed this box temporarily to one side, took that box out of the way, and then all the bees were flying flew back to here and then I shook eight, 60 to 70 percent of bees from that box into here and they, this is just all nurse bees now. So you can see they're all over the pollen sub, they seem to be munching it a fair bit, I don't know whether it's doing much, there's so much coming in through the door, let's see what we got. Don't forget, these have just been in. They went in last night. So these are just been accepted. Looks like we've got a reasonable acceptance, but they'll be good and bad. We'll see what we got. So what I've got to do now is, what I tend to do is I remove the bars from the frame. Okay, and I just stack them here. So it makes it safe for them. So they're not going to get knocked. I still make mistakes. I dropped a bar in last year, as you probably saw. These are started cells, and I'm just putting these on top. And by doing this, you allow the bees, the heat coming out of this colony is absolutely incredible. So it gives you time. And even though it's cold out there, okay, it is cold. And you can use your pollen sub as a bit of a help because it keeps the, 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 the cells away from the, the frame and for tunneling, it gives, gives you a bit more room. So let's pop that one there for now. These are all the same uh, genetic. Shake these off. I'll go and take that back up and we'll use it tonight so for the next bar. And after I've harvested these, I'll leave this hopelessly queenless and then I will, you can see them all fanning, look, and then I will um, put the next lot in tonight. I'm probably going to go for a double graft. So we've got grafts that are taken and grafts that aren't. So we've got that one here. This one is not accepted. So we'll take that one off. This is where it gets a little bit awkward and I don't tend to use gloves for this. You can see inside there, that one isn't accepted, or it may have been before, and they've decided that they, they didn't want to carry on with it. It could be my grafting, it could be the fact the weather's gone off, who knows? And sometimes it's just a genetic of bees. I've had colonies that draw everything up, and I've had colonies that hardly draw anything. So I put that down on the side here, and what I tend to do is just go along and take out any that are duffers, and then, I gap up with a bar of other ones, so that one as well. So we've had 10 out of that 14. So we've got to be a little bit careful because it get a little bit pushed for space. Yeah. That's a really good bar, that one. That bar is 100%, I think. Every single one is accepted in that. That's the second one down, which often is the one that's full. So that's a good acceptance. And all the time, you can feel the heat coming off of this. So yeah, I they've can still got too. maximum yeah. nutrition. The, 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 the bees are nice. There's no rush. You take your time. If you rush this, this is where you make mistakes. And this is another thing I've learned to take my time, you know? So let's look at this one. So we've got one there that is a dud. One's fallen out. So we'll have to find that one <laughs> there. And I, no, I didn't. That's the one that's fallen out there. So yeah. I don't know if we were just putting cells into the some more cups into these cell holders uh, in the kitchen i said to molly if there's any that are loose take them out so we took out about five but also i missed that one yesterday so yep that's all good i've just damaged that cell you've got to be so careful just knock the edge of it got another one there and another one there there's three on this that are missing same as the other one that one there is debatable i think the larvae is just dried up in there, so this is what you have to watch. 
So pretty good take overall for a first graft. Let's just have a look at this last bar. This looks like the lowest one. Yeah, maybe the night was cold last night. What does that tell you? The lowest bar and the night was probably cold. Who knows? But we've still got quite a few. So I'm going to just take these off one by one and put them on the bars that are not complete. And then it makes the perfect bar up. Put my high tool down for a minute because I'm going to damage myself and the cells. It is so, I can't stress this enough, it is so, so difficult, so easy to damage these cells. So you have to be really, really careful. Takes a little bit of time just to jiggle them all around. I'm going to do a double graft tonight. So I've got two frames there with new pollen just to make sure they've got the maximum and obviously the pollen sub's been on. You can put the pollen sub on a few days before to make sure that your colonies are completely um, up to strength. So that's complete, that bar. That's complete, that one. I'll just check it again. Yes. So we're going to have a couple of cells spare, I think. Or maybe not, maybe just be three bars. Which is still pretty good, which is 75% take for the first graph, not too bad. <coughs> We're going to a little bit more than that, actually, because that's complete as well. So, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this fourth bar as it is with the two on. Someone is... said, uh, are you possibly concerned in chilling the cells? Yes, that's why I'm leaving them on top here for the moment because the, this is where the transfer gets difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these to the finishers and that's why I had the finishers set up with the frames open so I can just pop these straight in when I get there. And that's the whole idea. You won't cause any damage if they're in within a couple of minutes. And you can leave your builder open, it doesn't matter. The bees are queenless, they'll sort themselves out. So I'm going to put these straight into here on their sides. And I do believe keeping them on their sides is the best thing because it just means they travel well. With the bees on, it doesn't matter. So you'll see what I'll do with those two spare ones at the end. I won't put that whole bar in. I'll add them to another one as well. There's no reason why they won't draw it up perfectly well. So let's come and sort that out after. Let's go straight and put these in the finishes. I said it's windy and cold, so I want to make sure that I want to get these in quickly. One false move can ruin everything. But Someone said, uh, what about putting a partially filled honey soup under the cell builder to mimic the flow? And I didn't get to read the end of the question. Well, you can do that. And if you want to do it, you can. It, it's absolutely fine. Um, because they do, but the problem is the flow is so strong anyway. I, I'm, I prefer having a feeder on top. Ow. I prefer having a feeder on top. And then uh, they have a permanent nectar flow anyway, because a feeder to me is a bit easier. I see, I can't. I'm going to get one of my cell bars. I can't hear the questions because I have a glove on, unlike my dad. So in they go. And I'm putting one. I'm going to take a glove One per on. bar, per, uh, per colony. And what I can do is, in a couple of days' time, when these are finished, or in four days' time, they'll be capped. But in, in a couple of days' time, if you, if you want to add another um, another bar uh, alongside you can because you're spreading the load of the build for the bees. And that's all you need to do. So on top of that, after I'll put my feeder and some pollen sub. And I'm going to quickly close this now because I just want to get them all in quickly. And I just want to make sure they've all got... Look at the bees around there. Plenty of bees there to... Just going to knock those off. Plenty of bees to... Look after those cells. So this is this is a good populated colony. So this is where I put the extra two. Okay, so I haven't got any metal bars on this one because unfortunately I picked up the wrong frame. But you just sit them in between like that, and as long as they're vertical, try not to use a frame that has lots of honey sticking out either side of it. And there you go. That's all you need to do. I'm actually just going to move it down a bit because I need to leave room for the last two cells. The squash to be there, but. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not ideal. 
or anyone else says. But those are in complete, They're, they are there now. You can take these last ones off. And like all I do is this, and they will be made up perfectly. It's got to make sure I get this spread across. But this little trick works really well. It's all you need to do, because they will actually glue that to the top frame. There's the cell, and they'll come up and be around those very shortly. And they'll build those out, those last two. On goes the that. Because I've got this ready, I'm going to give this the pollen sub straight away. Use this one. So that's right above where the bees will be. And on top of this, I'll put a feeder after as well if they need it. Okay, so that will close down there. And I'm going to go get the feeder sorted out. And that's done. So we've got the last one to do here. And this is exactly what it's all about. It's just having everything ready so you can put your cells in straight away. Just colour the bees are looking beautiful. They've got food, there's a flow, they're above a queen excluder. They're going to finish these cells probably really well. One bar. Okay, so what I do is I have these metal strips that my friend Colin Edwards in the UK uh, knocked up for me. Now they're only straightforward, but it's a really good idea. And um, it stops the bar falling through the um, frame and it just gives you that security. Can you turn it around just yeah. to, so I know that the cells are, no, right. there we go, yeah, there, so then you can So this see. means I can just drop the bar in, but yeah. the whole thing is you don't want to leave them using the space. So you want to close up the gap because if you close the gap, that helps prevent them build burr comb. But don't forget, I've already given them that, found, that foundation here so that hopefully they won't be building burr comb. But it just means that when you come to harvest your cells, you can have a little bit more freedom to move everything around because when you part the frames, it doesn't and you've broken your queen cells after all that work. It's all about process. It's all about making sure you've got everything just right. You know? So they're all in. So that's not a bad take. That was... 12 duds out of 54, so that's 40. No, that's uh, 56 it so that's is. 52. No, uh, it was 14 times 4, wasn't yeah. it? So, so 52 that were, sorry, 42 that were good. Yeah. I think, or was it 54? Whatever the maths is. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, we're both shit at maths, but there we go. That's why I'm a beekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have these uh, wooden, um, I've had these for years, actually, <laughs> these little boards, and they sit on top and you can just open up on your aluminium like that if you want to feed. You just have to be aware that sometimes the bees can't move around that well when that's like that. So you make sure you open up inside a bit or you move your frames accordingly so that at least they can get to the feeder if they need it. But uh, I'm going to come back later and put those on. Got some bees in there. So if anyone wants to ask me any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Mm. We'll, just, we'll go to a place a little bit quieter around the corner and I can take my top off. There's nothing really here to do now, apart from come back and make sure the pollen sub is all on. And uh, I've got to write down, and I'm gonna, I put a marker in each box, the, 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 the graft, but I know it's all the same series, all the same queen this time, but I am, am actually recording it under my obligations in France. I have to uh, have a dossier de élevage, it's called. It means like a, a queen rearing register. So everything is marked, the date, the time, when it was grafted. And it gives me an idea, and I'm gonna follow mm. these queens through from now on and hopefully we'll have a better control of what I'm doing and, and hopefully get better results. There's someone who said, do you find it better to have one top bar as opposed to a frame of two or three, bar, of two or three bars? Uh, of, of what, sorry, of? Yeah, I read the, the question. Yeah, it says, do you find it better to have one top bar as opposed to a frame of two or three bars? Okay, well, don't forget, this is just the finishers. So yes, I do prefer that um, because I find they finish it better. This is just, this is exactly the same as um, cells that the bees make in the supers in the summer. If you don't have queen excluders, often the bees will make supersedure cells in the summer at, in the top of the frame. It's exactly the same. They're just drawing them down. They just think, you know, um, they're queens. We'll go over here where maybe there's a bit too much wind, but we'll find a place that's quiet up here where I can, over here, my... That's all right, wherever. <laughs> I can take my top off. <laughs> I think people want to see you doing the bees though. <laughs> well, I'm not doing any more bees because I've actually got to go off after and go to other apiaries to put supers on because uh, our flow here is so strong that we've just got to keep going. 
even though it's Sunday afternoon, I'm just, you know, it'll all be over the flow here in two weeks. You've got to just keep pushing while you can. So, um, but that was an overview of what I do. It's pretty simple stuff, but it's just a process and it's learning the process. There, I'll say it again, there's loads of ways of raising queens and I'm not saying this is the best way. All I'm saying is this is a really good way for me because my starter box that I can just set up and leave is a process and you can run lots of cells through it quickly and then you can get them finished on your finishes. And don't forget, your finishes are also your brood factories that stock your cell builders and they make nukes from at the end of the year. So nothing is wasted. You're not pouring, pouring, pouring resources into a box you get nothing out of. When my cell builder is finished, I can either, I'll reassemble it with the last batch of queens and then I'll let them probably finish those cells. I might take a few out to a finisher just to reduce the number down a bit. But then I can restock that with some more brood or just let the queen build up and then put the super on for the, for the summer honey. It's so variable, you know, because that, 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 at the moment, this time of year, that finisher would make about six nukes if I divided it up carefully. But at the end of the summer, if I was doing my last builder, I'll just put a queen cell in it and leave it because it's got to build up for the winter. It's got to get those winter bees. So at the moment, we're at the time where it's a bit like last week when I was making a colony from a queen that was virtually on her, la on her last few support staff. So I, I caged the queen. It's, it's all about knowing what you can do and when for the time of year. And at the moment, there's plenty of resources. We're just in the mid of our first flow. And whatever you do, you can recover from or you can grow and everything will keep growing this time of year. You don't have to start thinking about, oh no, winter's coming, well, what are we gonna do? It's, it's like that really, the, the brilliance is shining through all the bees. You can really, you can exploit them is the word. I don't like to say that, but I do exploit my bees. I'm a beekeeper, I'm a bee farmer. These bees have to work for me. We give them everything we can, but we just enhance, for instance, the cell building, so we get the bees to make lots of cells at one time. That's how I see it. I don't see it as being um, that I'm, I'm being horrible to my bees. I see it that we're really doing a good job and raising good queens in the best way we can, so every queen we raise has the maximum nutrition during that process. And at the end of it then, that's what reflects in your honey crops and that's what reflects in the way you do things. So anyway, I think we'll call that from yeah. there. Uh, just, uh, there's just a few messages. A lot of people are saying thank you for finding the time to stream and answering some of the questions despite having so much work to do. They appreciate it so much. Greetings from all over the world. No, you're, you're totally <laughs> Greetings from uh, America, Indiana. Greetings from Ser Serbia, I think it is. Thanks, Richard. And we've got a few questions. So the first question is, will bumping the frame of cat cells kill them? Uh, probably not, but it's always a good idea to treat them like eggs, even more delicate than eggs. Um, they do say that the larvae is a certain way up in the cup, and if it gets flipped over or, or damaged, it could easily be bruised, or if it gets flipped over, it might suffocate. Some, because there's apparently, I think the, 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 uh, the part of the, the larvae where it breeds is called the spiracles, I'm not sure, I may be wrong on that, but they need to have access to the surface. And if they get covered in larvae, they, they can actually drown. So, because um, when you graft the larvae and you pick it up out of the cup, you see the little line of like ridges on the larvae and you've got to look pretty mm. carefully with some good glasses on. Um, but you see that and so you've always got to try and deposit it. But it's just better to be organized, to take your time. For instance, leaving the bees on top of the colony gives you time to, to juggle things around without having to rush mm. things, you know. And then there's another question. Do Varroa get attracted to queen cells? Um, yes, they do, just the same as any other cells. But don't forget, queen cells have the shortest uh, uh, pupation time. So in terms of Varroa's um, active efforts, obviously drone comb wins head, hands down because um, they've got more time to reproduce under that cell. But if you do get infested colonies and you try and graft from them, see what I've done is I've added brood to that cell builder. So I am actually boosting the Varroa. So I've got to be careful with that. And you're absolutely right. I have seen signs and symptoms, not of Varroses, because the thing with, queen, with cell building is you're bringing in loads of nurse bees that are cleaning all the time. And if you've got good hygienic stock, you don't really see a problem, but the Varroa are there. 
and I do think that you've got to give them a vape every now and again to keep your cell builders under control. You've got to actively manage your mites even in your finishes. But I've never seen a problem with the queens, but I've heard about it. And uh, someone asks, um, how do you clean starters and builders from Vora before starting the process? Right, well, I don't. Just um, quickly. But I, as I just said, you can treat the, the vaporized oxalic acid. As the season goes on, I basically give them a vape every few weeks because the problem is, as I said, I'm bringing in um, Varroa to my cell builder and stocking it well. So you've got to be totally sure. But at the same time, if you imagine that is hopelessly queenless now, and but there's no, for, all the mites in that box mm. are phoretic. All the mites that are in there are on the surface of the, of the Varroa because there's no, um, there's no place for them to go under the caps before the bees cap it over so they can reproduce, which is what they what I want to do. So technically they're just walking around with nothing to do. But if you um, if you wanted to vape it now, for example, between series of queen cells or even with the cells in, there's nothing stopping you doing that. There'd be, it'll be it's pretty uh, intense noise from the colony when they're all covered in oxalic acid, but it's, it's probably a good thing to do because you're going to wipe all your mites out in one fell swoop. But I've never actually tried it in mid um, in mid uh, cell production because I don't know whether it would affect the cells. It's something to try. It's a good question. Mm. And uh, well, it seems that we don't really have any questions left. I okay. think uh, no, there's just everybody. Thanks ever so much for joining in. This is all about sharing stuff. There's none of this. You raise better cells than me. I follow loads of people who raise cells around the world, and it's just fantastic that people are learning how to do this process because this is what's so important for queen rearing and the future of our bees is being able to make our own queens from our own bees and being sustainable. Mm. And you know, there's people everywhere now that I'm contacting me, sending me pictures. It's just brilliant, you know? Mm. That was my aim. I'm, I'm not the guru. I'm just helping people understand some of the process and uh, hopefully um, they're able to have a go if they've got the resources, so you know. Uh, there's someone who's just put in a question. Uh, when is the beginner, the beginning of the flower season here? Well, we're, we're, we don't, the, the, the nectar flow is starting yeah. now. Well, it, so it's not starting now, it's virtually finished. Where if you just pan around, you'll see this is our hawthorn. This is a major part of our uh, flow in Europe. Um, I planted all this myself because uh, it's a great windbreak. But you see some of it's in flower, some of not but but you, Molly will, will, will ratify this, you can smell it, it's really strong the smell, it's yeah. almost sickly, but it means that, if you look, there's just bees all over it, and the reason why they're all over it today is because the wind, as we said before, is so strong, but uh, it's, it, when this finishes, our main spring flow is virtually done, Yeah. and our canola is three quarters over now, and if we have cold weather or cool weather the next three or four days, it might eke it out a little bit longer, but it won't make much more flow. So we're really going to be done within two or three days. But we shall see. It might go warm. We might have a bit more. Okay. But there's plenty of pollen going to come in now till the start of the summer flow. So that's a real bonus for us. There's always pollen. And um, there's two more questions. Can you have time for more questions? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah go on. Uh, can you take a 10 frame hive? Let me just redo the chat again. Can you take a 10 frame hive and break it down into two five frame boxes to make a cell finisher? Yes, you can, but you have to be careful with what you do because you want to make sure that you've got enough nurse bees to, to make that, to, to draw up those cells and to finish them. Sorry, to finish those cells. I will do a video in the next few weeks on making a small amount of cells with just a straightforward 10 frame hive because I did a talk on it. Um, I mentioned it in my Cambridgeshire beekeepers talk. If you want to go to my YouTube channel again and you'll see it there. There's a whole, I run through the process, but I will go through it and, and show you. But if you want to use them for two finishers, you can, but you have to obviously remove the queen and um, make it queenless and they will draw up cells. Mm. But often they will drill cells all over the place because the queen is missing. They may not draw your cells. And that's one of the beauties of having a queen right finisher is the queen is still at the bottom. And if you have a queen right finisher at the top where there is no, um, where there's just your cells, they only draw the cells that are there, not anyone else's. They draw just those cells. So they don't make hundreds of other. You see, I've got open brood in my top of my finisher and the queen will not Sorry, the bees will not make extra cells in the top. They'll only draw the cells that are there already, which is why it works really well. Mm. There's bees annoying me, but uh, 
So I hope that answers your question. Mm. Really well. uh, there's a, uh, a question. Uh, when picking up a graph, do you scoop it in a particular direction? I personally go from either south to north or or right to left, a kind of that kind of angle. If I'm grafting, I'm doing it this way. But it all depends on whether you're left or right-handed. And also, if you, when you're grafting, one way to help you graft is to flip the frame over because the cells are all in, all slightly inverted to help the larvae stay in the cell. So if you flip the frame over, when you have the frame like this in front of you, if you flip it upside or flip it round, the cells are actually facing slightly downwards. So you can see better into the cells and you can scoop them up a little bit better. It's something that uh, a lot of people are, are kind of picking up on that it does actually help quite a bit. Just takes a bit of getting used to. But I, I say hands down grafting is the best thing to do because you cut out that middleman job. You haven't got to put your queen. I know, I know a lot of people post about how easy it is, but I just find it's an extra process you have to do. So if you just take your frame out of the colony and graft, you instantly have got cells, instantly have got larvae where you need them. You haven't got to wait for the queen to lay up in, in a couple of, or in a, a genta system or whatever you use. Um, it's just my opinion, mm. but I just feel it's hands down better. Uh, what percentage of the queens will be successfully mated? Really good question, okay? I'm still trying to work it out, but I think everyone is lucky from grafting to finishing, you're lucky if you get 50% at the end of the process. But it all depends on your starter. And you could say, because you're pushing it and you're trying to get the maximum amount of cells, you may get bigger losses. Whereas if you just went for a few, but quality, you would have a much better success rate. So it's kind of finding that balance somewhere in the middle that you get good cells that are well fed. That's why I moved mine to finishers, because if I left all those cells in that starter, I doubt they'd all be finished that well. They may well reject even more. So, but the ones that are in there will probably all be finished. And certainly um, the, the, the genetics I'm using there, they're nice bees, they draw up well, they're prolific. They should be able to finish all those adequately. So I'll be able to harvest those in 10 days time, nine days time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that's it for questions. Uh, is Molly your daughter? Yes, Molly is my daughter. Unfortunately. <laughs> I'm lucky to have her. She's absolutely fantastic. Uh. But anyway, we'll end it there. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a good bit of fun. It's just nice to do a live. Take care. Speak to you all soon. Bye for now. Bye bye. Don't know how you end it. Though. It's quite awkward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yes.